In this video tutorial, we need to have a plugin called Cyber. You can find this amazing plugin in project file in download section. I have provided Windows and Macintosh version in zip file, so extract and install it on your computer and restart your After Effects. Okay, first of all, let's import our logo. So double click in project window or right click and choose import file. Then select and import your logo file. Okay, now let's create a new composition. For composition name, enter logo. For width, enter 38, 40 pixels. For height, enter 21, 60 pixels. For pixel aspect ratio, select square pixels. Set frame rate to 23.976 frames per second. For duration, enter 200 frames. And finally, for background color, select black or enter this code. Okay? Now let's drag this logo into logo composition. As you can see here, my logo is bigger than my composition, so select logo and press S key to load a scale property and decrease the scale value. And another way to match the logo size to your composition, from menu choose layer, transform, fit to comp height, or press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and G. Okay, now let's organize our project, so create a new folder and rename it to Pix, and move the logo file into this folder. Okay, now we're ready to create our main logo composition, so click on create a new composition button down here and for name enter logo FX. All the settings are the same as logo composition, width is 3840 pixels, height should be 2160 pixels, and nothing needs to be changed, everything is just perfect the way it is, so hit OK button. Now drag logo composition into logo FX composition. To add saber effect to this composition, we need to trace this logo composition. So, select it and from menu choose Layer Auto Trace. You can use my settings as a reference, for example, set channel to luminance, for tolerance enter 5, for threshold enter 15, and make sure this apply to new layer option is on. You can use different numbers to have more or less points on your masks. For example, if you enter smaller numbers for tolerance, you will have more points on your mask. And if you enter smaller values for threshold, you will have less details for your masks. Okay? In this case, I think 5 and 15 are good enough. Hit OK button. Okay, here we have our masks, nice and clean. If you can't see these mask lines and points, maybe your toggle mask button is off, so click on this toggle mask and shape path visibility button. Okay, select this layer, hit return key and rename this layer to lights. We need to change the color for this layer, so from menu choose layer, solid settings, and here change the color to black. Okay, now I want to change the mode, so click on this toggle switch modes button to access to this mode color. Or you can press F4 to make this column visible or invisible. Now for mask layer, select screen mode and turn off this toggle mask button to hide these masks for now. Ok, now select this lights layer and press M key to load all masks. Here you can see several masks with a keyframe on frame 0. We don't need these keyframes, so select and delete them. Ok, now it's time to add magic to our logo, I mean that magic saber effect. So, select the lights layer and go to FX and preset panel. If you can see this panel, simply from menu choose window, FX and presets or press Ctrl 5. Now type Saber. Yes, there you are my friend. This wonderful effect helps us to create an amazing logo reveal. Ok, now double click on it or simply drag it over your lights layer. Ok, now as you can see we have it in effect controls panel. As you have seen in preview video, I have created several Saber effects and for each one I have used different presets. So, for the first Saber effect I want to use a portal preset. Let me find it. Yes, there you are. And now as you can see that straight line changed to this amazing shaky line. Ok, let me rename this effect to Saber Portal. Now let's change the color for this Saber. I like to enter this code. D96B00. But you can choose whatever color you like. To change the line intensity you can change core size. The higher the number, the more light you will have. For this line, I want to have lower light, so let's enter, for example, 0.14. Increase the glow intensity, for example, let's enter 175%. Now let's change glow spread. If I use lower numbers, we will have a shaky line. If I zoom a little bit, you can see this shaky line clearly. 
Okay, for this portal effect, let's enter 0.14 for glow spread. Okay, here in customize core section, we have an important guy called core type. Set this option to layer masks. And yes, now we have this portal effect over all the mask lines. To have a better view, let's hide logo composition. Yes, here we have a cyber effect for our logo. Great. Currently, our composition has a black background and it's not transparent. Let's check it. Click on this button. Yes, if you can see a white and gray checkboard, it means your background is not transparent. Okay, I want to have our saber effects on a transparent layer to be able to see our logo that is under this light layer. So, here in render settings section, we have two important options. Composite settings option is black, so we have a black background for light layer. So, we have to change it to transparent. And set alpha mode to mask core. Here we have another great option. If you choose disable, we will have more brightness for our saber effect. Okay? For now, I choose mask core option. Okay, now I want to create animation for this saber effect. I'm gonna add some keyframes to start size, start offset, and end offset. These options give more dynamic style to our saber effect. So, go to frame 0 and set a keyframe for start size at value 0. Select the layer, hit U key to load all keyframes. Now let's go to frame, for example, 15 and change the start size to, for example, 200. Yes. Go to a few frames forward to 45 and click on this small diamond button to create another keyframe for start size at current value, I mean 200. Now let's go to frame 16 and change its value to 0. Okay, so good so far. The next effect I'm gonna add some keyframes to that is a start offset. So go to frame 0 and set a keyframe at value 100. And then let's go to frame 60 and change it to 0. Okay, let's see the result. Great. Okay, the next effect is end size. Simply change it to 0. And finally, let's add some keyframes to this guy, end offset. So let's go to frame 30 and set a keyframe at value 100. And then go to frame 60 and change it to 0. Great. Okay, let's see a preview. Move work area end handle to a few frames after the last keyframe. Select lights layer and press U key two times to load all keyframes. Okay. Press numpad 0 or spacebar to see the preview. It's great. Okay, let me change alpha mode to disable to have more lights for this server. Okay, now we can add offset to this server effect. To do this, we have to use the mask evolution property. As you can see, by changing this effect, I can decide where my server effect starts. In fact, we can shift this effect over our masks. Okay, let's set it to, for example, 60. Now, as you can see, our server effect will start from this point. If I change it to 0, our effect will start from this point. So, we can shift this server by mask evolution property. Let's change it to 60 again. Mm, okay. Or maybe we can set it to negative 60. This time our saber will start from here. Yes, great. Okay, now let's change another effect. Here we have flicker. Increase flicker intensity to 15. And turn on this mask randomization property. This will help us to have a flicker effect for this saber. As you know, all lights have a little bit of noise and flicker. So by doing this, we will have a natural light. Okay? As I told you before, to have more brightness, you can increase core size. And to have shaky lines, you can decrease glow spread. To change a property with a small and precise values, you can hold Ctrl key and drag over the value field. Okay, let's change it to 0.14 again. Okay, great. We have finished this portal saber effect.